Hi everyone, I am Talk Custom, and on today's video we are going to be unboxing and checking out the brand new Brother ST150. This is their brand new entry level heavy duty machine. Uh, and I've never been sent a sewing machine by a manufacturer before, so I'm really excited to check this out and see what comes with it. So let's jump right into this and get started. Okay, so we've got the machine itself. We've got all the documentation and instructions. This is a dust cover for when you're not using it. Uh, I've never seen one of these. This is like a little cheat sheet for all of the stitches that will clip right onto the handle there, which is kind of cool, so you know what stitches this has. Uh, power supply, our foot pedal, and this has all of our little accessories and presser feet in here. Uh, so we're gonna set this whole thing up and show you guys how it all works. Okay, so now that we've got all our stickers on, I'm happy to, to get started with this. Um, so to set this up, it's just like any other machine. Uh, you've got your wires for your foot pedal here, and this is the power supply here. Once you got those plugged in, uh, you just flip this switch right here, and the machine will power on. So when your machine is powered on, you'll see this light up LED screen here, and it says 01, which corresponds with uh, the first stitch on this little uh, legend here. So each one of these corresponds with that stitch, and as I go through these, it will change its settings to do that stitch. Now they made this little clip thing here that goes like that, so you can snap it onto your machine so that you always know what stitch is what, um, I will probably try to end up memorizing my favorite ones and then just going with that. All right, now that the machine is on, we can get ready to thread this thing and show you how to use it. Um, something I like about these newer Brother machines is most of them have a drop in bobbin casing, which is really nice. Uh, so first we're going to wind a bobbin and then we're going to thread the top. To wind our bobbin, we are going to put our thread on the top of the thread bar and then hold it in place with the stopper. Then we are going to take our thread and we're going to run it through this metal hook right here. And then behind this little white tab, we're going to go back there. Now we're going to go to the right of this little metal notch. We're going to loop it around and go behind the wheel and then go kind of under the wheel here. And it should start to get tight. Now what you want to do is take the end of your thread and you're gonna go into the middle of your bobbin and out the top of the little hole there. You're gonna pull this all the way through until the thread is tight, okay? Now, I'm gonna bring this all the way over here to the bobbin winder, and I'm gonna flip it upside down so that my thread is coming out the bottom here. So I'm gonna put this onto the bobbin clutch and pull it kind of tight so that there's a little bit of tension. And then we're going to snap this clutch all the way over to the right. And that's going to tell the machine to wind the bobbin instead of run the needle. Um, and if you hold the thread down, there's a little uh, cutter on the bobbin winder. So it will cut the wire. So as I press down with my foot, it cut this thread here. Oops. And it is winding the bobbin. So there is our thread. All right, now when the bobbin's full, it'll just kind of stop turning. So you can just cut your thread and then snap this to the left and pick up your bobbin. All right, so you're gonna bring your bobbin down here and you're going to drop it in so that the thread is going counterclockwise. Um, so you're gonna drop it in and then as you pull the thread down, it's gonna go kind of underneath this little hook here and we're gonna go left and up and around and there's a little blade right here that will cut it as we pull it tight so now the bobbin is in place and we're going to put our little case over that so the bobbin is wound and ready to go all right so now we're going to thread the top of the machine so we're going to do kind of the same thing where we take our thread and go through this metal hook we're still going to go behind this white tab here and then we're going to kind of ignore this thing, but we're just going to go straight down this channel right here. Okay. 
And I'm going to move the camera down so I can show you how the rest of this is going to look. Okay, so as I move our thread down, we're going to go around where it says three here. Then we're going to go back up. And there's a little metal hook in here where it says four. So we're going to go left and down and down this other channel where it says five. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you how to thread the needle. So we're going to get even closer to that. All right, so as we pull this down, uh, you're going to see where it says six, there's a little metal notch right there. Uh, we're going to take our thread and we're going to hold it sideways like this. And you're going to want to get the thread up and behind that little notch. And there's a hook that will hold it in place. And then we can pull it down. So that is going to stabilize the thread while the needle is moving up and down. Uh, and the way that the automatic threader on this machine works is after you get it in that notch, you're going to take your thread and run it through the little V of this thing here. We're going to hold that there. And then there's a lever just to the left that's going to pull this down. And then we are going to run our thread between the little grooves right where that is. And if you run it kind of along the bottom, then hold it up and let go, you're going to get a little loop that forms just like that in the back of your needle. So I'm going to grab this by the loop and just pull this until uh, the thread comes all the way through. And now uh, the top of our machine is threaded. So there's a little groove in the presser foot right here. So I'm just going to run this under there like that and pull the thread through the back. Now to make sure your machine is threaded, something you can do is you can lower the presser foot and then you can kind of hold the back of the thread that you just did. And I'm going to turn the wheel one time around and always turn the wheel towards you. And when it gets back to the top, I'm going to tug on this thread and raise the foot. And what it should have done is made a loop where the bobbin thread is going to come out. So there it is there. So now we've got our bobbin thread and our top thread both coming out the back, which is exactly what we want to see. So now this machine is absolutely ready for sewing. Okay, so if you are brand new to sewing, I'm going to show you just how to do the most basic stitch that you can. Uh, I've got some just regular flannel coffee theme fabric here. Um, so I've got two layers of it and I'm going to just kind of lay these on top of each other. So that's two layers of fabric. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a straight stitch seam right along this edge. Well, I'm going to line this up on the five eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you look at this plate, there's these little lines that tell you how deep of a seam allowance you have. So I never start right off the edge of the fabric. I always start about half an inch in. Now what we want to do is I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward. And then there's a little button right here. That's like a little U-turn. Uh, so that is how you stitch backwards. And that's going to let us do what's called a back stitch. And this ties little knots on the other side of the fabric so that uh, it makes the seam nice and strong and it will make it so that your fabric won't fall apart. Um, so as I zoom back in here, now I've gone off the edge of the fabric, so now I'm going to do just a regular forward stitch. I'm going to run this all the way to the edge of the fabric. Okay, so when I get to the edge, I'm going to run off the edge by about one stitch, and then I'm going to do my back stitch button, and then just run it back off. Uh, this machine does not have an automatic thread cutter, which I really love about my um, SE400, but that is something I will just have to live with. All right, so now we have our first uh, straight stitch seam right here, and we've got um, just a nice solid seam in the front. This is nice and strong. So this is a heavy duty machine, but it seems to handle delicate and lightweight fabrics just fine so far. All right, so now it is time for us to do our stress test with this machine. So since this is a heavy duty machine, we are gonna put a heavy duty needle in here. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to change the needle. So I'm going to use a little screwdriver to loosen this top black bolt and eventually this will get loose 
and the needle should just kind of fall out. Okay. Now this machine came with um, these. These are supposedly uh, some very dense, heavy-duty needles. Now this one is, I think, the lightest of the three variations, which was a 9014, I believe. So all you have to do is look for a little groove on the back of the top of the needle, and it should be flat like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that's all the way in the back, and then we're gonna push this all the way up until it can't go up anymore. And I'm just gonna tighten this little black bolt with my hand until I can't anymore. And then just kind of lightly tighten the rest of that. And now that new needle is nice and in place, and now we're gonna thread the machine and do a little test. All right, so for our stress test, we've got about 20 pieces of orange cotton duck. Cotton duck is kind of like a canvas material. Uh, it's similar to denim, but a little bit more tightly woven. Uh, it's what they use in Carhartt jeans, if you're familiar with that. So what we're going to do is just keep sewing layers of this together until it can't sew through anymore. So we're going to start with two layers of cotton duck. All right, so this will be six layers, and this is about as much as I ever need to do on even my heaviest messenger bags. So let's see how it does with six. No problem at all. All right, I'm at 12 layers now, and I can't actually even slide it under the presser foot, so I'm at the point where I have to actually lift this in order to get that in there. So this is layer number 12, and does not seem to have a problem. This is 16 layers. I can't imagine why anyone would ever need to do this, but just so you know, you can with this machine. Okay. Now for the first time, I can finally hear it kind of starting to slow down, but it's still just blasted right through that. Okay, all right, I think that's our first official complete failure. Um, and as you could hear, it was really struggling. So it got halfway through before the thread gave out. And I bet if I used like an upholstery thread or even just a slightly uh, higher quality thread, this would have done fine. Cause it still went through all of these layers without a problem. Uh, so there's all of our seams in the back. And this just sewed 19 and a half. We'll call it 20 layers of uh, cotton duck together. Now, <clears throat> just for fun, I wanna see how thick this really is. So I've got a pair of calipers here and I'm gonna zero this out. So uh, if I were to measure, we are at 0.42 inches or over 10 and a half millimeters worth of fabric, which is, that's a lot. That, that is a, a tremendous amount of material for this machine to sew through. Um, we're gonna do one more test real quick. Let me set up for that. All right, the second part of our stress test is to see if this machine can sew through leather. Uh, I've never had a home recreational machine that could sew through even one layer of leather. And we're just using the same regular sew-all thread. Um, so let's see how this does with 
one layer of four ounce leather. And that seems to have done just fine. So I've got perfect stitches front and back. Uh, so that's just one layer. So let's see how this does with two layers. And we're gonna go skin sides together. If this works, there's gonna be a lot of really cool things I should be able to do with this machine when it comes to leather. So, let's see how two layers goes. Okay. That didn't really seem to be a problem at all. So we've got um, nice perfect stitching and very, very strong. And even for a very standard thread, this is a very tight seam for leather, which is very impressive for a home machine to be able to do that. Um, now, just for fun, we're gonna just keep stacking leather and see how far this thing can go. Um, but being able to do just two layers is a big deal for a home machine. Okay, so that was three layers, and it seemed like it was kind of trying at first, and then it was just really easy. So we've got three layers, that is all nice and strong. <laughs> And I don't think I can fit more than four layers in here. So we're going to see what happens when we do four layers of leather. Yeah, that is, that is about as much as I could possibly fit in here anyway. So, let's see how this goes. Come on, buddy. Oh man, okay. So as you can see, it was actually struggling for a while. And how far did it get before the threads popped? Okay, so it got through, uh, I don't know. It got through most of it, but the stitches up top are really strong. Uh, for this thing to be able to sew through four layers of leather uh, is very, very impressive. Uh, and just as a contrast, I wanted to show you something really quick before we finish up. Okay, I wanted to show you guys an example. So this this is a messenger bag I made a few weeks ago, and it's just cotton duck and denim and uh, some flannel, and there's some stabilizer interfacing and uh, some other th and some batting in there. Um, but parts like this, like the box stitch, or if I'm doing the adjustable strap. Um, my machine typically struggles really heavily with the box stitch because this is about six to eight layers of denim and cotton duck and interfacing and stuff like that. And my machine will break needles or just not even be able to punch through. So um, I, I love the machine too. Uh, it's the, this is the Brother SE400. It does both sewing and embroidery. It does a great job of embroidery. I've been using it for years. Um, but even with heavy needles, it's just not able to do what this machine here can do. Uh, the fact that we sewed, what was it, uh, 20 layers of cotton duck together or four layers of leather, um, I've never seen a machine do this. So I'm going to be using this machine a lot for some of my more robust uh, projects. Um, and I even, I tested this on just doing some flannel earlier and it did fine. So this, this machine is going to be able to do anything from garments to leather and cosplay and jackets and all kinds of stuff. So I'm really excited to see what kinds of projects I end up doing with this machine. All right. So my stress test went on a little bit longer than I thought it would. Uh, I will probably do another video on this machine because it does buttons and buttonholes, all kinds of different stitches. And there's lots of other features that I'd like to show you guys. Uh, but for the sake of this, I think we've covered uh, what this thing is capable of doing. And I'm really excited to see what kinds of projects that I'm able to make and that you guys are able to make with this machine here. 
All right, you guys, I think we've done a pretty good job of testing the limits of this brand new Brother ST150. Again, this just came out in July of 2019, and so far I am very impressed. I will probably end up using this machine every day. Uh, I'd like to invite you guys to check out uh, my website at talkcustom.com. I not only have a lot of pictures of things I've made in the past, uh, but I also have an online shop and uh, you can browse through some of that stuff. And I have a brand new tutorials menu on my website where you can see all my other videos and check out recommendations of other tools that I use. Uh, so it's kind of a sewing resource to help people who are getting into the craft. Uh, if you guys have any questions or have any other videos you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I really appreciate making this video. Big thanks to Brother for sending me this machine. And I will see you guys in the next video.